when I, when I like like a person want to get close to him, I think like we have to be trauma bond, which it's probably we not get good. Trauma bond. But I'm like, I'm gonna pull out a little tea, see what happens. Are they gonna pull out a little tea trauma? Little mm. tea. All right. They, they're not. They're not feeling it. All right. Let me pull out. Let's pull out a big tea. Let's see. Let's see what they do. <laughs> are they gonna? Are they, oh, I loved it. I was yeah. like, she's my vibe. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things with Sean and Andrew, a podcast all about couples and our friends. Yeah, pretty That's much. What it's about. And I'm <laughs> yeah. so excited, honestly. We hit this relationship hard. Hard. We I'm pumped. Yes. I went on Hannah Brown's podcast about three weeks ago. Dang. And immediately fell in love. I was like, she's amazing. I want to be best friends with her. And then I got to meet Adam and I was like, dude, he's awesome. And now he would I be have best a, friends with Andrew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to breakfast, had like a first date. Now you're doing jujitsu lessons together. He got me into a new hobby. Hannah and I sat down for a solid three hours and talked trauma. Um <laughs> Anyways, we're besties, <laughs> and they're in studio today, and we're going to talk all things Hannah and Adam. Here's what I'm so pleasantly surprised with. I mean, we watched The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. We're stands, as they Maybe say. Maybe the most iconic scene in Bachelor his Bachelorette history. That's right. When Hannah was like, Luke P, leave. Wow. Well, I mean, that was just a beautiful rendition. <laughs> During Honestly, the final rose. H- Hannah, ba- Hannah Brown's season was kind of the last. It, it was like the best one, and then it fell off from there. Yeah. From my perspective. Okay. But you look at these people that are on the show, and you're like, you know, I don't know anything about them, really. It's yeah. like a show about dating. It's hard to get depth in that show. And in this conversation, I feel like I really understood how awesome Hannah B is, how awesome Han- Adam is. Like, we talked about what shaped them, and how they got to where they are today. So, Hannah, Adam, thank you for joining us today. If you want to find out more about these two, if yes. you're listening, um, they're pretty great. I would recommend that. We'll link their socials, information. Hannah wrote a book. And Hannah's new podcast, which is amazing. A lot of things going. Pew, so pew, many pew, things. Pew, Everything pew. in the description below. Pew, pew. But go check it all out. Anyway, without further ado, we bring you Hannah Brown and Adam Woolard. <laughs> First um, time I met his family, we were still like, dating but i was being very like i don't know what i want to do if i want to like be in a serious relationship but he was like i'm actually going to be in nashville as well when you're doing the music video because my family is there and we're celebrating christmas early i would really like for you to meet my family i'm like oh i don't know if i want to meet your family yet i'm scared (laughs) like just like that was felt really fast for me but and it was it was fast (laughs) it was fast and his brother had just um him and his his brother and his your sister in law. Wow, that was hard for me. Um, had just had twin boys during COVID. Hadn't let anybody like be in the house yet, and this was the first time that everybody was getting together no. during COVID with the kids. And he was like, um, wanted me to come, but had ensured the family. Like I was just doing this music video, getting tested every day. I go the first day. It was great, and I didn't feel. I felt fine, obviously, and. It was great meeting everyone. And then the second day I woke up, I was like, man, I'm just so, this day I'm leaving too. I'm like, man, I'm just so tired. Like, I don't know why I'm so tired. <sighs> like, I guess that music video really was just a lot. <laughs> yeah, <it's still laughs> yeah. out of you. And go hang out with the kids. Like, uh, we were like wearing masks when we hold the we held the kids. Mm-hmm. Like, it was still very, like, we were being safe. I'm driving home that day. And it was like, oh, no, that was that was the day I went to go see Caitlin. So I saw them felt oh, kind of like tired. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's just for the music video. Then I go see Caitlin, hang out with her and Jason. <laughs> she let, I spend the night with her. And I, I was just like, yeah, I'm just so tired. Like, mm-hmm. it's been a long day. Get up the next morning, still feel the same way. On the drive home, I literally felt like I had gotten like, in a, I felt like I'd been hit by a bus <laughs> wow. and I was driving home and I was like, I, I called my mom. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but my whole body hurts so bad. Oh. Like, I don't know. What, I, I, I don't know what's going on. Cause I had been tested four days. Yeah. I'm like, I can't be COVID. I get home. I can't even hardly get myself out of the car. Oh. I just lay on the ground and my parents like take me and of course I get COVID. So I didn't have to tell his, him that I have COVID. <laughs> no. Tells his family, they're like, okay, they all get tested. They all, I got seven people sick. Dang. I mean, my sister-in-law's parents, no. my parents, uh, my um, brother. Caitlin, Jason, and there was somebody <laughs> else. Oh, I ended up getting you sick, I think, eventually. I was, yeah, for sure. Um, and they so you all started had, the whole epidemic, pretty much. Basically. Yeah, like, right here with Hannah. Patient zero. I felt <laughs> so bad, 
and his family could not spend. They didn't spend Christmas together. His mom and dad oh. stayed in separate rooms for Christmas. It was a really good first meeting. I was yeah. like, you guys. Oh, man. Yeah, and they still like me, so <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I did that to Lexi. You did? Over Thanksgiving. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You we get, we did the it. same thing. We, yeah. Well, like, Caitlin cool. and Jason was supposed to go to, like, Canada. Like, they were supposed to, like, go see their family the first time <laughs> in, like, two years. And they couldn't go. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny at all. It's funny. It's funny now. Yeah. But I felt so bad. And, of course, like, people, Caitlin, like, shares a lot of her life on yeah. social media. So then she's like, no, I can't go now. Because and, and she, because didn't, she didn't come out and say it was Hannah Brown who got me sick. But she was like, yeah, I had someone over. And, like, everybody who like, follows oh, them, no. they know like, it was like, Hannah. who's hanging out with who. And was she like, was like, yeah, I had someone come hang out no, with me. No, I don't I'm think sick. people knew. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, he's like, yeah, know. yeah, they did. People know. They do now. People know? No. Yeah. We'll trace it back. But everybody's healthy now. Yes. It's just not the best Christmas ever. Those kids have great antibodies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, yeah. it's been a fun couple of weeks with you guys. I know. Been good. You've become fast friends. You and Adam are like. We're oh, bros. All he right. talks about now is jujitsu. <laughs> I, <know. It's laughs> I couldn't think of anything more fun to do than come and talk to you guys. I was just like, <laughs> yes. let's like let's get into this. Oh, this is Adam's no, only second um podcast. Yes. Mine really? was his first. This is his second. Um Fresh. Yeah. Andrew asked me yesterday if we could outfit the other half of our garage as a jujitsu place. Vincent, Honestly, yes. you should. Hey, yeah. Don't feel this. I'm angry. <laughs> I oh like the energy. My God. <laughs> Sorry. I know him pretty well now. <laughs> hung out with him for like a week. But like, I, he's going to do it. Like there's, <laughs> yeah, he there's will. There's no chance he's not going to do it. He will. <laughs> Did you see us grappling? We were, we were rolling around, Hannah. I saw maybe like, like short clip a short clip tray, of it. Right? Okay. Oh, I yeah. feel like this is going to yeah. go to Andrew's head so fast. What, jujitsu? We no, drove babe, past. That's not the jujitsu philosophy. I know. No, I was about to say, um, that's I'm not I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to say this, and this is very like out of character. I, this is not something I would ever say, but I just have to repeat it. So I apologize ahead of time, guys. But we were driving down the road the other day, and he saw a jujitsu studio, studio, and two guys <laughs> were, <laughs> were walking up. And one guy had a blue belt, and one guy had a black belt, which he's taught me what that means. Yeah, and yeah. he goes, "I could beat their ass." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" As a, as a joke. As a joke. As a joke. As a joke. It, it was. Oh, you're yeah, blushing. It's cute because it's a very humbling sport. Yeah, I've done. I've done it. Really? Yeah, like twice. He w- wants me to get into it because it is really good for self-defense um but yeah it's a very like hard thing even if i feel like if you're super like athletic it doesn't really always i think it helps but it doesn't always translate and you'll see these guys that you're like how is he a black belt yeah and then you watch him and you're like dang pretty beat my ass (laughs) i am not gonna lie i again we've only I feel like been friends for what three weeks now. <laughs> as long as yeah. um, since the podcast, I was like, I'm in love with these people. They're amazing. She literally said that. I did. She said like, that. I, could be I did. Friends with Hannah. Oh, yeah. I love that. And then we had our trauma talk for about three hours, and I was like, <laughs> Wow, we are. Talk. Yeah, my trauma talk that I just. <laughs> I was telling people. I, I talked to my. <laughs> I talked to my therapist about it. I'm like, I feel like I just like when I, when I like like a person want to get close to him. I think like we have to. We trauma bond, which it's probably not get good. Trauma bond. But I'm like, I'm gonna pull out a little T, see what happens. Are they gonna pull out a little T trauma? Little mm. T. All right. They, they're not. They're not feeling it. All right. Let me pull out. Let's pull out a big T. Let's see, let's see what they do. <laughs> see they are they gonna? Are they, oh, I loved it. I was yeah. like, she's my vibe. Yeah, she's my vibe. I mean, it's the way you figure out if you want to be friends with somebody. I also like love the that same. This probably won't make it, but I love that we are in the company of someone who's very young, and she's like just never experienced any of this I know. <laughs> and her poor little eyes were just like oh my gosh i, I remember walking in after the pool <laughs> yeah. and seeing her and she was just like like staring at hannah <laughs> yeah. just like i was like she, she's not <laughs> she's she's not not she not wasn't ready she wasn't ready no. she's so sweet but i think so sweet. she was like yeah i can't relate to really any of what really you're saying anything. what's then, trauma bond right now trauma bond yeah yeah what was addressed because well here's what's interesting <laughs> so to me I'm, I'm actually curious because Hannah, oh, you have a background in like beauty pageants. Most fascinating yeah. person in the world. No. Oh, we, trust me, we have a team that does deep dive research. Oh, okay. And cool. I feel like the more I get to know about both of you, I'm like, they are the most fascinating people in the world. Super yeah, interesting. I don't, I don't know about that. Also, well, do, you ever just look yeah. at, <laughs> do you ever just look at Adam's jawline and you're like, oh, oh my God. that okay. is okay, Michelangelo carved that out of granite. <laughs> that look at that thing. 
guys give him so many compliments <laughs> and straight men all the time. They'll be like, hey, I don't want to make this weird, but like you're you're a pretty attractive guy. <laughs> and I'm like, it's so funny because it's not uh, like anything I've funny. ever experienced before because the guy like wants to make it very clear that yeah. like this is not like I want to be with you, but just I was like, man, like you're a good looking guy. And he's like, thanks. I'm like, this is so, I've never, never experienced that before. Wow. Yeah. I yeah. Guess, I guess I have, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like, yeah, I'm used to it. Oh, it's so annoying. Like usually as the girl, I don't know. I feel like I had people like address me and tell them. Like, <laughs> no, now it's, now it's your boyfriend. No, it's him. <laughs> all the time. Wait, wait, I mean, come on. No, but. You did it all the time. No, like, that's, you were, if. Like, yeah, go you're through, stunning. Go through her Instagram comments. It's like, of course, but that's so the Instagram. She, In person, people will come up and they'll be like, we'll say we're doing something. We're in LA, have to go work. And they're like, oh, is, is he the, is he the actor? And I'm like, no, it's for me. I know it's I mean, weird. I, I have acted. You have acted, yeah, but I'm the actor. You know what I mean. You're, you're the thing. They're like so. They they always think it's you that is here for like whatever oh, event. Yeah, yes. I'm like, yeah. okay, great. Wow. Because he does kind of look like a, you know, a Hollywood actor. And his voice is Thank even you. nice. You know? I know. Oh, La- ladies and gentlemen, start. Could you just say that for a second? Start your engines. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's pretty nice. It <laughs> it's a, yeah. it's a, you should have him on the podcast more often. In a world, saying. actually, he was my first like. Well, Sean was my first guest, but like my first like person to be in the studio with because I was so nervous. And or wait, did I have Sean first? I can't remember. You had me first. Yeah, first like he was my guinea pig to figure out like. Can I carry on a conversation with somebody else? That's what I keep telling her. She was so good. It was so natural. With us, I knew it was going to be that way, but you were kind of like the first, you know, person outside of us. Yeah. It was so good. Thank you. Like, I came in at the tail end, and I was like, oh, my gosh, it's going great. Like, how are we doing? Yeah. And then I saw it back, and I was like, wow. It was great. It was was so effortless. Yes. Thank you. But in doing that, he, yeah, I was like, he's so good at this, like being a podcast I guess guest but you probably could do your own ca- podcast one day if you wanted to but it's just soothing to hear your voice Who's and you're good about picking up on like transitions and stuff in a conversation you know mm-hmm. I think that's important I feel sometimes. like I, I'm not good with that he's good at that to like be like okay we need to go to the yeah. next thing like yeah. how you just interrupted the, exactly the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. who's more of a perfect- perfectionist between you two really yeah but you're you You're close. It depends on what it is. What do you mean? So like when you get hyper focused yeah. on something, it's like this has to be exactly how I see it right now. And I can be very like, that's not right. That's not right. I don't know how to make it right. That's not right. <laughs> yeah. Where you, I think, live your life more like more structured. structured I, yeah. yeah. When I get like in my like perfectionist mode, it is a, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> but it, it just depends on what it is like if it's interior design it's just like no this is exactly how it's supposed to be nothing can sway from my vision right now yeah but it, it just it has to be something you're super interested in mm-hmm. and i've learned a lot about your brain in the past you know six months or so and yeah he started how? oh because i just recently got like a, f- a full diagnosis of adhd which I think everyone in my life has known for a while. I'm like, yeah, my doctor, um, I told him, I'm like, yeah, my doctor really wants me to start reading this like book. He's like, oh yeah, I've been reading books um, about ADHD. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, just to like know how to best live with you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know if I said it like that. But, but yeah. like live and support you. So sure. you recognized it before. Did was, you recognize it before? We all, we all kind of right? knew, <laughs> but he was already like just – really more re- I was never researched it I was just mm-hmm. like oh yeah I definitely yeah I struggle with the, all these things but I don't know I wasn't trying to f- actively fix it mm-hmm. and then it's like we need to actively try to help make life function a little bit better than it is right now and he had already been I'm trying just, to figure that out for me I'm in a place <laughs> That's actually in my amazing. Life. it was awesome oh, yeah thanks. yeah I'm just in a place to where like I'm taking ownership of everything. Like whatever's happening in my life, I'm like, it is because of me. And maybe it's not always because of me, but 
I feel like as a man and, you know, someone who wants to lead not only in our relationship, but at work and all aspects of my life, like I have to take ownership of what's happening around me. So it's like, yes, maybe, you know, we're a little bit off one day and I can just easily say, oh, it's probably her ADHD. But no, it's I have to take ownership of that and realize like I'm reacting to her. She's reacting to me. But at the end of the day, if I don't own it, then I can't do anything about it. So I read some books. Yeah. What got you to this point where you wanted to take ownership? I think not taking ownership in the past and kind of seeing where that led. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like, you know, being very structured always, it has been great for me, but I haven't always like owned up to like what's happening in my life. Whether that be, you know, with my job and, and get kind of getting stuck in a rut in a job and not making a change or like finding a different outlet. Um, sometimes I kind of place the blame on other things, other people, my environment and doing that is never, is never a healthy thing and it never leads to change. Yeah. I can very clearly see why you guys get along. Has the ownership strategy is- <laughs> worked? Yes. It's going well. hundred percent. Yep. Mm. In so was- many ways. It was really cool to see a shift in that because I think, yeah, he he had gotten very always like super healthy, regimented. That that was not something that was new and um, always trying to like grow and learn. But there was like this switch of like, I guess, yeah, like you're saying ownership of, okay, I'm not happy in this part of my job. And instead of just like, trying to find other outlets like he would find that's like where jujitsu became like a big like hold or if it was yoga meditation like that's where he would like go to um I guess appease the part that he didn't like in life instead Mm -hmm. of then like really going into like okay I don't love my job right now instead of pretending that I that Mm -hmm. it's okay I'm gonna or like Change legitimizing that. it and like, oh, this part of my job's great. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. ooh, I can I can hang on to this and really, you know, kind of understand the value here, but it just all encompassing my job was not fulfilling. Yeah. And I came to that realization like years before I made a change. And that mm-hmm. that is just not something that I had ever experienced before. And it was a lot. Um so finally making a change and taking ownership of everything is the only thing that got me to a new, a new career, a new outlook. So what is fulfilling to you now? I have a lot of things that I'm super, super passionate about. Um, right now I'm focusing on building a foundation for us to grow. And part of that's real estate. Um, part of that is investments Um, A lot of it is passions outside of work, but my job right now is kind of facilitating all of that. And that that gets you excited. Yes. To like build that. Yep. It It gets me excited too. Because I love that he's back in, I feel like we talk about this in the podcast episode um, that we did, but I think it's really cool, his story of like, he didn't find fulfillment. I don't want to tell your story, but like you got back to like finding fulfillment in the thing that you enjoyed at first, um, banking, banking, like banking finance type thing. And he had, he had kind of strayed from that because he hadn't really, you hadn't really found like your footing of how to, I don't want to speak for you, but like you lost fulfillment in that you went to like search, find yourself, find what other parts of life you enjoyed and you were able to like take all that time of that search and that grow and then bring it back into the thing that I think you're actually really, you really enjoy because that's all you did the whole time is his Twitter or whatever. All it is is like finance stuff. I'm like, why aren't you back in this? And now he's back in, back in it and like has really loved it. It seems. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Mm. We'd like to thank today's sponsor, AG1. AG1. Man, do we love AG1 over here. I first gave AG1 a try back years ago because I was always tired of Googling the latest health supplements to try to optimize my immune system. And I just wanted a one-stop shop to make sure I was getting all of the vitamins that I can just in one dose. Mm -hmm. 
So it was pretty overwhelming initially trying to keep up with the latest health trends that may or may not work. So I love knowing that AG1 just has me covered right there. And AG1 is always trying to better its supplement. So I think they've gone through like 73 iterations, constantly making it just a little bit better. I drink AG1 first thing in the morning before the kids get up and it makes me feel like I'm doing something good for my health. I love to take some me time in the morning before <laughs> everyone else is awake. And AG1 has always been part of that routine. AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can prioritize your health without having to complicate your routine. Listen, there's no need for a bunch of pills. All you do is mix one scoop of AG1 with water every day and that's it. And I love knowing that every scoop of AG1 is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and whole food sourced ingredients that benefit my gut health, boost my mood, and also give me healthier looking hair, skin, and nails. They invest a lot into making sure this is scientifically backed and I'm convinced it works. So if you wanna take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free that's right, a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash couple things. That's drinkag1.com forward slash couple things. Check it out. It's really cool to hear, as like the outsider, to hear her talk about watching you go through that whole journey mm -hmm. of like being able to see that you weren't happy and you went on a search for something and to see she like lights up talking about seeing you happy again. It's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, cause it, uh, I'm very, I'm one of those people and I also know that I'm very privileged for my life kind of just like got me in this place where I can like, I feel like pursue my dreams in a way that I know that it might, I've skipped a few steps. Mm -hmm. I'm very aware of that. But as someone that, um, knows that you have like so much like passion and joy and purpose in life and believe that for yourself. It was really hard to see him at some points, like getting a little complacent and making excuses for like, Oh, but it it's, it, it's okay in this thing. It's like, no, like I want you to, I don't care what it is. I remember we were walking on the beach one day. We got in like a, not an argument, but I can, I can be a little um, nag. I am aware of that when I want, I think it's all like in, um, it comes from a good place for sure. But he had been saying he wasn't like as happy in his job for a while. So I would just every so often be like, okay, so what are you thinking about the job? Have mm -hmm. you like thought of like where you, where you see yourself? And he would just be like, I'm still working on it. I don't know. Kind of got in um, that conversation again, and I was like, "I look, I literally don't care what it is. I just want you to have like, I want to be behind whatever like your purpose and passion is. Like, I genuinely don't care at this point if it is, you know, if it is just jujitsu or whatever. I'm like, I don't think it's the smartest move to like open a gym right now. But if that's what you want to do, like, and that like fires you up, then great because I would rather see that mm -hmm. than." Um, you coming home and not being excited about what's Life. happened that day. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's so hard as a partner, as I'm sure you guys know, I don't know if you've ever experienced this before getting behind someone who isn't like gung ho about something. Mm -hmm. And I, I recognize that in myself and I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is happening to me. How do I get out of it? And I would, I would kind of legitimize my work. So just kind of, to back up a little bit, I was a sales director for Greg Lauren fashion company, kind of, I was selling $6,000 jackets basically. Yeah. So like very high end artisanal brand. And I would travel, you know, twice a year to Paris, a couple of times to New York every now and then. And that was like the most exciting part of my job. And that was taken away during COVID. So all of that kind of shifted. I was working from home. I was, you know, doing more stuff on the fulfillment and the accounting side. It just wasn't what I initially signed on for. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is not, this is not what I want to do for even the next couple of years. So I had to really go back to the drawing board and really figure out what I was passionate about, what I wanted to do. And it was a long process. It was a process that was not fun. There were days when I was just like, I'm just going to quit and then I'll figure it out. And then I would talk to you about it and just like, oh my God, you're just going to quit. We, don't have to quit. <laughs> we can't we, quit and not have money. something. Yeah. <laughs> and the, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So long story short, it just got to a point to where I was like, okay, like 
I need to start making calls. I need to start making moves. And I was doing this occasionally along the way, but it just got to a point where I was like, I have to do something drastic. I have to jump out of this. And, you know, one thing led to another. We were talking about Nashville. That's the craziest story I yeah. feel like. Yeah, you can tell that story. So he's kind of going through all this, like finally being like, okay, I'm going to do it. Like I am going to tell Greg that I just, this is not where I see myself long term. Because I also think in that job, like it wasn't just he's like, oh, um, just like, okay, this is how it's going to be forever. But I do think there were sometimes opportunities that were brought up in conversations. He was like basically um, Greg's like right hand man and everything. And there were a lot of aspirations for the company, but sometimes like it was just taking a while for that to happen. So he, I think that also was a struggle. But like I said, finally was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to let him know that. I think I'm going to um, move on to something else. And we started talking about Nashville one day. Um, and I'm like, it's a place that I'd always wanted to live, being from Alabama. He lived here before. Just had like a, a our first initial conversation. The next day, he's like, babe, I just got a call from the old bank that I used to work for, wow. for here, offering, like asking if I'd be interested in a job. So I feel like that was definitely like a God thing. Mm -hmm. We had so many other like, um, I think, affirmation and confirmation from God like along the way but that was that one was really weird because it was just like first initial conversation the next day like you hadn't heard from these people in forever yeah, and it was someone that I highly highly admire he he does amazing things in Nashville like super big into nonprofits and community work and just hearing from him and his excitement of the new bank that he helped start and the role that he saw me playing in and I was like oh my gosh like that Sick. was so that yeah. kind of like started really started to propel the conversation of, okay, like here's an opportunity that is like being set in front of you. Like, is this something that you're actually, what would you be interested in it? And it ended up not being where he took his, the job here, but I think it definitely was what started the conversation and got us here. And now we mm. are obsessed. It's pretty cool. Like uh, we know a couple of people from the show and yeah, well, just, you know, you never know what how people deal with that. We know a couple of people from different shows. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, you know, when someone gains notoriety, it's like, yeah. you don't know how they're going to respond to it. But seeing you guys just like dive into the community, mm -hmm. it's great. It's like really, it's like, okay, these people can hang. Like, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's what Nashville is about, where it's, hey, people are pursuing their passions and some people might be noticed on the streets and other people might not be, but there's a mutual respect because it's like, we're all doing this together. And mm -hmm. it's, I feel like you guys have played into that well. Well, and going back a little bit, not to go on a tangent, but just like the relatability side of it, another reason why I feel like we get along so well, mm -hmm. everything that you just described is literally what we've gone through firsthand. Mm -hmm. Andrew bounced around the NFL for a while, and as a spouse back then, whether you're a spouse or dating or not, but seeing like the connection between yeah. you guys, I could so blatantly see he was not happy. Yeah. And he was going through the motions, and I was the nag who was just like, okay, like, you're not fully committing to this. I can see you're not passionate about it. You either got to be all in or we got to find something else or whatever. And he got a little lost for a year or two almost. Reflecting back on that phase of my life, I don't know if you could relate, but like the amount of resistance of like, I know I should do something different, but it's this like daunting mm -hmm. unknown yep. mm -hmm. of like, well, what is it? What is the different? Like, there's, I know I'm doing this one thing, and there's a million other things that I probably could be doing, but that's overwhelming to think about. Yeah. So then it's like, geez, that it's an adventure re retrospectively to like jump into this whole new pond and like mm -hmm. you find something out about yourself of like, okay, I can, I, I'm proving to myself as a man that I could do something yeah. and figure something out yeah. and take a step towards a career or like build. It's like an exciting place to be, as terrifying as it is to take that step, mm -hmm. you know. But this is something Hannah and I talked about a lot the night where we talked about Little <laughs> Z and Big Two Drama. Yeah. <laughs> was just like the loss of identity when you lose, uh, when you get off of a show, when mm -hmm. you get out of a sport, when you transition careers or get out of a relationship, whatever. But that feeling of being lost and not mm -hmm. knowing who you are and feeling your identity was rooted in, in one whatever it was you were or wherever you were is so hard to get through. Mm -hmm. And it can take people lifetimes to get through it. 
But I think when you have a partner and you can see that in each other and you can push each other mm-hmm. to be like, okay, I can kind of see that this direction's not working. Let's try a new one. It's really special. It's powerful. And Andrew fell in love with YouTube and that's how we right. got here. Um, I think it's awesome. Yeah. So okay. it was. And that's, that's such a good point too because I am so grateful for you and you know this um, because you didn't let me just sit mm. and be complacent because if she wasn't there, I probably would mm-hmm. still be a Greg Lauren unhappy trying to figure out like, ooh, are these next moves that the company's going to make? Are they going to fulfill me instead of actually taking ownership and doing it myself? Mm. Like if you didn't, if you didn't prod and poke, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting in Nashville yeah. right now. And that's also, I, I can see from like you talking about Andrew, it's not like, it's not that I didn't think, it's actually that I thought, oh my gosh, like go do something else. Cause whatever you mm-hmm. can do, I think you're going to be successful and just pick something where I think for him, like you were saying, it's daunting. And when I think about my experiences, like starting like a mm-hmm. new podcast or something, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Or, um, I'm scared, but when I, like in another person, I can always like yeah. see their potential and like, I could definitely see mm-hmm. out of potential. I'm like, Go do, like, what do you want to do? I I believe that you can do it. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to receive that and to also feel that, like, for yourself. How's it been for you finding your passions? Mm -hmm. What are are you passionate about now and and what's the process? So this is, like, probably one of my, like, biggest struggles in life. I talk about it all the time. I've talked about it since I was, like, a child. I've always wanted, like, somebody who's, like, a, a... love singing or love gymnastics or even dance. Like I dance, but I knew dance was not my passion. Like, and as a, a child, I'm talking like maybe 10 years old, I went to sleep crying to my mom being like, I just, I don't know what my passion is. I don't know what I'm going to do. And my mom's like, calm down. <laughs> you have like, it's a Wednesday you're 10. Yeah. and you're going to school. I can figure it out. But it's always been something like I don't think my passion has been as concrete as I've wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. And so my whole life I've been like I've wanted to be good at everything, but haven't really known like like haven't had like a driver sometimes other than just like being good at something. Mm-hmm. And that's something I've really like started to uncover these past few years. And so understanding what my, or discovering my passion has always been a pain point because I like a lot of things. But I've never been like obsessive about one thing. You know how people will be like, um, get really into like ju- for him, like jujitsu, like mm-hmm. obsessed with it. I don't have anything like that. Movies, actors, shows. There's nothing that I've been except for maybe Taylor Swift in like a weird way because I just like as a child like grew up with her. Respect. But yeah, she's the best. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> Swifty. We see her like yes. next weekend, right? Uh, yeah. Weekends. But. Um, <laughs> And saying all that, it is something that I do struggle with, but I do now notice the things that like make me light up when I talk about them. So I get excited. Like, for example, coming in, seeing this house, <laughs> like I love um, interior design and like the ideas of like um, just completely renovating something. Now, am I, have I had the opportunity to fully do that myself? I've decorated houses, but like I've never like, done a full reno no I haven't but it's something that I really am like passionate about like that's the stuff that I do watch Mm -hmm. on TikTok and YouTube and things so I'm figuring that all out right now as to say what my passions are it's it's a journey for sure I I love talking to people obviously I talk a lot but which is great it's great it's good that I'm doing a podcast I guess I'm curious (laughs) like I don't want to interrupt um I'm curious You guys speak so openly about just like each other and like the journeys you're on and going through the roller coasters of ups and downs of life. Something that I remember working through with Andrew with the NFL is as a partner, seeing your partner's lack of confidence is one of the most painful things I've ever had to go through. Mm -hmm. Like as a partner, like watching him and knowing his potential and knowing his capability and his power and like everything that he's he's able to do, but seeing him self-doubt and seeing him kind of lack that in himself was so difficult. I feel like mm. you guys have both gone through that and witnessed it in each other. How do you support each other through those times? I mean, 
the only time that I've ever noticed it with you, which was obviously like a big transition. Um, I feel like you met me at a very unconfident. In, mm -hmm. in, is that Look. is that a word? Uh, we'll take it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, disconfident. No, I think it may be <laughs> unconfident. Right I don't What's know. What's the right word? Can we Google? You met me at a very unconfident point in my life. Yeah. So like, I think just recently, really, like the last year, you've seen me kind of regain that confidence, regain that power that I once had. Because, I mean, when you first met me, it was kind of like, oh, my gosh, does he really like his job? Like, What is he, <laughs> what is he doing here? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't have been with you and you rode, the, rode the wave if it wasn't like everything else in your life, like you were, you are always like set up for success, very reg regimented, like cared about, mm. um, just the way that you lived your life and being fulfilled in a lot of other ways. It was just like the job. It was like, the job is important, but we had very open conversations mm -hmm. about it. Like, even though I do feel like sometimes I felt, um, like I was a nag, I'm not very good at, waiting to resolve conflicts that's how I struggle and he'll he struggles with not ever wanting to talk about the conflict so sometimes I could be a little um get in my emotions and be like well, what are you going to do with your job and that's not the way to do it but especially with me <laughs> yeah um but yeah that was hard but uh for me I feel like I, I have like many episodes, like a lot more frequently of struggling with confidence where I think you had like this big, like one thing that we've worked through and I can see like how much you've like really grown mm -hmm. even in the last like few months. It's been really cool. Um, but for me, I think it's like more of like an ongoing struggle. I don't know. What would you say? I think so. It's kind of yeah. a, a day to day thing depending on it. And like your career is so kind of all over the place in terms of like day to day it's really mm -hmm. hard to kind of get into a groove for you mm -hmm. like it would be for anybody just because not one day looks the exact same mm -hmm. so I think it's just kind of like oh I feel really confident in this what I'm doing right now but I'm doing something completely different now and it's like oh it's dropping and I wish you could see me the way I see you and I so know you I wish you, you could, could see. I wish you could see I wish yeah. I could you could see <laughs> you the way I see you. <laughs> That's it. Wow, that was a lot. Um and I know you always think that I see you with rose colored glasses, but like the way you handle pressure, mm -hmm. the way you handle so many different moving parts is like so admirable. It's it's not easy and you're you're in front of the camera which you're really good at, but it's like you're always under the spotlight whether it be you know, a news article, uh, an Instagram post, like people are always like picking you apart and you handle it beautifully. Thank you. Yeah. And you should be confident 100% of the time. They're really cute. Hannah doesn't like it. I, sh I, yeah. You struggle with compliments? I just really struggle with it because I'm like, I mean, nope, the, that's not right. The podcast, <laughs> the true. podcast, for example, like we mm -hmm. went through so many just like, Oh, like I'm, I, I have nothing to talk about. Like, are people gonna want to listen? Like, I can't all form of these sentences, things, which is still kind of true, but like, and like, I brought I'll get up really in my head. I was stupid and brought up vocal fry. Never should have done that. But like, vocal I, fry. It's it's this thing where <laughs> it's kind of like this. Um, like when you when you are trailing off a sentence, it it huh. it kind of like gargles a little bit. Uh, it's it's kind of like you're talking here and not from your diaphragm. Interesting. And I just brought it up because. Wow. I'm I'm weird. So like I I read about like the best podcasters and what makes a really good <clears throat> speaking voice and how do people kind of get drawn in to you as a speaker and as a podcaster and what questions should you ask? So I went down that rabbit hole and I started like really intently watching her as she was asking questions. And the vocal fry. And so then I'm like, "Oh my gosh, and I have vocal she, fry." Yeah. And now I've <laughs> No vocal fry. I no, I still struggle with it, but <laughs> It was, no, it's gotten so much better, though. Thank you. I just have learned you have to make sure that you have full breath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I know how to breathe very well. But don't definitely, I mean, don't, should not overthink. No, many I things. Do, though. Honestly, well, here, a couple things to noodle on for you, Hannah. One, I think often about the phrase to know is to love. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, that's why, like, Adam was telling me about jujitsu mm-hmm. on our first date. And <laughs> I, knew I no- love bro dates. I knew nothing <laughs> about sweet. it. I had no empathy for it, couldn't relate or, like, have any appreciation for it. So I'm like, all right, well, let me, in an effort to, like, further our relationship, because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm interested in getting <laughs> to know him better, it's like, let me get to know jujitsu better. Mm-hmm. And so by showing up to a class, I now learn about this amazing philosophy that is jujitsu. And it's like, it's not even really about the physical thing that I'm, that I'm uh, interested in that mm-hmm. art form for, but it's like, as you continue down a path of, Hey, let me dive into interior design. Let me like, mm-hmm. let me take a two week course or like do a yeah. two week internship with freaking April Tomlin, which we should line that up. That's freaking yeah. nuts. She's, I don't think you understand. That's her, like, that's my, yeah, dude. I've, I don't message people <laughs> except Taylor Swift and April Tomlin. <laughs> did, I'm not kidding. We'll DMs go like together. Just I, I, <laughs> she's like 20 unanswered. Yeah. Hey, good morning. It's me again. <laughs> I did have to like, she did. Anyway, I, I feel like I've told the story way too many times. She did one time post my dance from Dancing with the Stars. Mm-hmm. I danced to one of her songs. T Swift or April Tomlin? T Swift. Oh my gosh, this is For huge. For a second That's I was huge. like, does April do music? No. <laughs> How do we not know um, this? And I had to go back and wow. see all the messages <laughs> throughout the years. I was like, That's oh funny. my gosh. The, she had it read of Hudson, Hudson. It was so funny. Um, but no, April, I've just messaged once and I told her like, like the way that she designs houses yeah. is like my, my dream. So yeah, I would love to meet her. But think about the process of like, you dive into something and then you, that passion grows. So mm-hmm. it really is like, the, there's so many amazing things in life to get excited about. That's yeah. where I'm at now. It, it's been a weird 18 months for, for me. I've had like friends try to commit suicide in this yeah. whole, I've mm-hmm. had friends die and mm-hmm. co- actually commit suicide. It's like, and I've taken a step back. It's like, okay, well, what do we do with that? Mm-hmm. You know, like with these people who are so sad, you can relate to it to a certain extent, mm-hmm. but also, dude, on this on the other side of the coin, oh my gosh, man, life is beautiful, mm-hmm. and it's like I could get into freaking. Pl- Jenny loves plants, Caroline loves comedy. It's like there's it's it's boundless what yeah. you could dive into. But as you continue down a path, that passion will grow. So like something to think about too. Also, one thing, yeah, if you don't mind, you said you feel like you don't have anything to talk about, maybe. And if, if you don't have anything to talk about, <laughs> Bro, Anna, then nobody has anything to talk fascinating about. fascinating woman in the world. So it's like, you got to kind of just own it, yeah. you know, and don't overthink it. Just kind of let it rip and there's going to be good and there's going to be bad, but you're going to get better at the at the good and then there'll be less bad. And it's like, it's, I'm freaking excited. So you got to, I'm, I'm done rambling, but that's my thought. I have another, I have a preaching okay, moment. Okay, Sean's going to okay. add to it. Um, Something that I love between you guys, your dynamic. I love, one of my favorite things about our podcast is getting to see couples dynamics. I love this it. This is prime time, too. Yeah, you guys are amazing. This is gold. The way you like respect each other, you look at each other, you talk about it. It's just so, yeah. it's amazing. Oh, I aspire to have that as well. Like, yeah. I mean, you aspire for no, it? No, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, she's like, <laughs> one, one day, one day. That's what I, mean. That's I get what you, like, you're inspired by it, <laughs> yeah. and, you're, and it's like, we need to cultivate more of that. I mean, yeah. same, yeah. like, I'm like, oh, we. I'm not the most physical touch person. I'm like, that's sweet. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I I can tell when Uh, I put my hand on her. She's like, okay, that's that's enough enough time. That's enough time. But I just wanted Uh, to say, I think there's something so special about, like, Hannah, the whole world knows you. No. From, if not Bachelorette, it was Dancing with the Stars. If not Dancing with the Stars, it's Special Forces, which I told you firsthand, I was... We all watched. We had watching parties for Special Forces because we were tied to it from Nastia. Mm-hmm. And we were like, is Hannah going to win this thing? Like, holy crap. Um, but the whole world knows you. They tear you apart. They lift you up. They define you. They, they edit you to their personality. They make you into people that the world believe. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden you find Adam and you find a safe place to find your foundation, which is what happened with Andrew. Mm-hmm. And I went through all of these insecurities that I still go through on a daily basis or like ups and downs. But like my foundation is Andrew. Mm-hmm. And it's so cool to see you guys so openly talk about your ups and downs. Mm. Whereas like we have couples who have yet to even address them who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s. And they're like, life is perfect. We have no issues. We've never, we've never argued. And it, it's just really refreshing to see that you guys have like stripped it all down and at the very foundation been like, it's us. And we're going to figure it out. 
mm-hmm. which is really cool. Mm, I nice. think that has to do with us both going on our own journeys. Like before we met, kind of he met me during my time where I'm like, I'm still not done trying to like figure out my life. This is going to be a wild ride for you, but if you want to be around, <laughs> but I think we had both like really understood. I feel like pretty early in life, like the importance of being whole by yourself. Like, and if you're whole and the other person's whole, then you can hold the other person and, um, like be there when like I'm going through it. He knows how to like be able to step up because he's not leaning on me to mm-hmm. get that um, confidence mm-hmm. to be able to to be there for me because I'm not giving him any confidence, you know, last week for sure. <laughs> like I was not, I could only give a, a small percentage of myself and he, d- that didn't, um, that didn't do anything to your confidence in who you are and how you can step up in the relationship. Mm-hmm. I think a few years ago, at least for me, I, I don't, think we would be in the situation that we are in now or the relationship that we are mm. where it is very open. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty confrontational and that's something you struggle with, but then you're also, you can be very, um, you can sit down and let us like get down to the root in a very like, um, I don't know what you do. You graceful. do something I can't do. Uh, yeah. Like graceful and thoughtful way you're, yeah, we just, I think, complement each other really well. And I'm really thankful for that. You guys go to counseling together? We have. We have. Yeah. We need to. F- we should do that again. Yeah. Even though our um, counselor was like, I love when y'all come in. It's just, it's nice because I don't think. She's not used to seeing couples who communicate. Yeah, well. we can, com- like, we have really good communication mm-hmm. styles with each other. Mm-hmm. And um, I think she was glad that we were there. And Mm -hmm. I definitely think there's things that there was a reason that we started going. Um, I think from healing from, it really Mm -hmm. did start with me, like healing past relationships and jumping in and being in a serious relationship at a time. Like I said, we met when I'm like, I don't know if I'm fully like healed yet, which Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're ever fully healed. It's always a process, but he has been like, so great with allowing me to have that space to continue to grow and learn more about myself and um, giving our relationship space and not pressuring me in any way, even though like um, I know like how much he loves me and how much like he's excited for our future together. So we did start doing couples therapy so that I could learn how to Mm. express why I can sometimes be hesitant or where this fear comes from it really doesn't have anything to do with adam it's coming from past things so that our relationship wasn't him always like oh my gosh is she always questioning me Mm -hmm. not always questioning him i'm still kind of questioning some of the patterns that i have in my life of what i think or expect love to be or given and what a relationship is like and so that was really awesome that he even was open to doing that and allowing me that space to just say all my fears or my doubts or what I need from him. And I think you actually really did enjoy it as well. For sure. And it helped us early on in our relationship, learn how to even better communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. So Mm. I think, yeah, I think it's great. We haven't done it in a while, but we could always do a tune up. Yeah. It's really fun. You mentioned being confrontational. He has a different way of resolving conflict. I used to get so frustrated with Sean. It's like she would just like beat a dead horse. Hammer. There would be something, yeah. and it's like, can you just let it go? Like, let's move past no, it. But we gotta figure the, all of it out well, now tonight. But yeah. it, it's been cool. We're seven years in. I don't know how. I don't know why it's taking so long. But this is where the jujitsu analogy has come in. I, I was telling him I've talked about jujitsu more in the last like, two months because of our marriage. Whereas like the, whatever the thing is, that's frustrating us. Like it's really just a beautiful difference in perspective mm-hmm. that I need to figure out w- how to find the value in it. Like, where's the, what is she trying to tell me in that? Right. And it's like, okay, she's being confrontational because she's uncomfortable with this decision that we're making. Okay, sweet. How can I encourage her to communicate to me differently so that we can actually just like have a more productive outcome results in this beautiful compromise in a way that like 
otherwise wouldn't like because it's not good in a relationship to just bullhead your way through and like do what you're gonna do make the decision yourself that's not the way it's supposed to be it's worse that way Mm -hmm. so it's like okay she has a different perspective it's really frustrating but like and we've gotten it's been Mm -hmm. fun the last couple months have been huge for us but Mm -hmm. you have some interesting hobbies abby uh adam you have uh meditation jujitsu what has this always been definitely hasn't always been i've been doing jujitsu on and off for about four and a half years um, meditation has been an everyday thing. Literally haven't missed a day for over 11 years. Every morning. It's fluctuated in the time spent doing it and the different modalities of meditation. But um, yeah, it's been, an, it's been something that for whatever reason, I've just known that I needed to do. With the benefits being what? So much. Um, clarity of mind. Uh, just like this, this weird inner peace that's hard to explain. Um, I feel like my perspective is just way wider. I, I've developed this empathy toward other people who have different views than me in a way that I never thought was possible. Um, but it's, it's constantly growing. It's, um, it was, it was this big, like ego shedding, not like a specific event, but over like the first two years of doing it, I just, I kind of understood myself to my very core. It's like all these accolades, all these achievements, all these titles that I've added to myself, like that's not really who I am. And I've kind of found that who I am is is connected to every other human being on this planet in a way that I can't really explain, but I'm, I've come to a point to where I don't need to explain it anymore. I'm very, very comfortable not knowing how we are all connected in that way. Are you guys religious? We are. Yeah. But I think that was also a um, something that, for me, I've grown up in the church. Um, I think after everything that happened, actually, I'm not, I don't think, I know. After my life kind of hit rock bottom, definitely hit rock bottom. I think I was kind of like angry at God for a little bit. You might, and when was that? Uh, I would say during COVID, kind of after like all the l- the come down of all the shows, I guess, mm. um, and just life and disappointment, thinking like it was going to be something it wasn't. Really, genuinely believing that I was like, I never watched The Bachelor, or Bachelorette. Like that was not like a thing that I watched. But um, I got like this random call. It wasn't from a friend. Like I had somebody randomly nominate me a whole thing. And I was really like, um, really in like a deep, one of the times I was like in my deepest relationship with God. And I was just like, this is like, if this is for me, God, like, okay. But if it's not just like close these doors because like, I'm really not even that interested. I don't know what I'm going to do in my life right now. This is kind of when I was thinking, all right, I'm about to move to Nashville. Mm -hmm. Um, but, like, didn't know what I was going to do, really. And the doors just kept opening. And it's something, like, I was not pursuing on my own. It wasn't something I was trying to make happen. And most of the things in my life that I haven't tried to, like, make happen are the things that have propelled me to the next thing. And it definitely did. And even after the first show, like, Beyond the Bachelor, I felt so connected to God, um, my relationship with Jesus, like, I learned so much about myself during that time, good and bad. And when like the bachelorette opportunity came up, I was like, God, like if this is something you want, great. It it was kind of a a stretch for me to be the bachelorette because I I wasn't like, if you watch the show, usually it's like the top four girls. That's who they normally pick from. I didn't even make it to like the hometown dates. So it was a stretch anyway, but they had kind of started talking to me about it. And I'm like, I mean, there's part of this that really interests me because I've like, if this is your will, then like maybe this is how you have me meeting my person because I believe you can meet your person anywhere. So for some people, it has worked out, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when it was just a a complete failure and and really um, brought in a lot of shame, uh, felt like just disconnected for myself, really. I wasn't even allowed like that much time by myself to even have like moments of peace in prayer. It was really, it was Mm -hmm. a lot. Like I journal or 
especially during that time, like every day it was really important for me to have that quiet time. Like did not get that. So just um, to cut the short story short, very like upset with like why, like almost like God, why would you allow this to happen? Cause I wasn't wanting any of this. Like I wasn't trying, this was not my agenda upset. And then life, there was just a lot that was happening in my personal, private life, my family life. And so, yeah, I was in this place of I'm really hurt in every way. My body hurts. I'm emotionally hurt. Things just aren't making sense. And so I think I got a little mad and then also was open to, like, how can I, like, just more open to everything which I think was good and bad because it also like solidified my faith now um, where I had never like met somebody that was not a Christian or at least said they weren't a Christian truly Mm. I everyone around me said that until I was on these shows and we met and I would say like you were not a Christian I think you 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 had gone to church in the past but you were definitely more spiritual and that was kind of like for me like oh I don't know I was up front of like I'm in a uh, like I'm in a place where I'm struggling a little bit, but like I do believe in Jesus. This is like um, this is a big part of my life. What are your thoughts on this? And he was like, I'm open to it. He was definitely open, and I'm like, okay. And it's been something we both kind of went on the journey with together. Me, I feel like being like healed him. Um, he's so heady. I feel like you can be, he's read like every book ever, I feel like, (laughs) and really getting to experience Jesus for the first time. It was really cool in in a way that I guess you hadn't before. He now is like, he's like the leader of, I think our, um, this, this life we've created, um, together and really, points me back to God and to Jesus, which is so like how it's all happened has been really Mm -hmm. sweet um, because I really wanted that. And that was something that was important to me, but I also wasn't going to like push that on him. And he wouldn't really let me push that on him either. Mm -hmm. Like he's um, like he said, like he's not, um, he went into like meditation, like stripping down everything. So he was at a blank space of like, okay, what do I believe is true? And what am I, am I going to follow? And it's not, anybody else telling me to do that it's what's my connection and yeah that was really powerful I think for and like a big step in our, for our relationship yeah um so yeah we hmm. now like that was our our two biggest things when we moved to Nashville was finding a church home and finding community and uh that is just a really sweet like I think just really is a really sweet reflection of where our relationship has led us both into back, I think back to home in Mm. so many ways. That's like figuratively, literally. um, And yeah, I'm really thankful for how God has like blessed us. Dang. Sorry, that was really long. No, you explained that so well. Thank you. No, it was great. Okay. (laughs) So I... I guess it's meditation, like the Wim Hof stuff. I mm-hmm. was telling Adam I was getting into this breathing stuff in the morning. I and this is when I knew I was going to like him. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I just do it like for four minutes. It's like two rounds and it's maybe two minutes each of these rounds. And the video on YouTube is like, I don't know, five or 10 rounds maybe. And I was just, I was like, I just do two. And he was like, look me in the eye. He said, Hey, do more. You could do three, do three <laughs> next time. And I was like, Okay, <laughs> I'll, 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 do, I'll do three. <laughs> and see, I'll that makes me roll my accepted. eyes. I'm like, this is not, this is every morning. I feel like I'm always kind of pushing the envelope, but I have found that the difference between two of those sessions and three is way different. Yeah, it's way way different. It's like the difference between getting the cold plunge for, for two one minutes minute. versus four minutes. Exactly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but like, I'm not I'm not telling out of like. I'm not yeah. I'm not suggesting out of arrogance yeah. or I'm suggesting out of experience mm-hmm. and I I've seen what it's done for me and I I'm I'm that way with everything. I'm that way with meditation, with jujitsu, with you yeah. know, exercise, everything. But I just sometimes respectfully I are not always. Yeah, and we're not, like, we're not we're not we're like, not the not same. We yeah. have different bodies, we have different minds. 
I think we are more similar than me and you are yeah. in terms of like what we can take, what we can handle. So I have to. Hey, it's not that I can't handle it or take it. I just choose not to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying we have bigger bodies that can handle yeah. more yeah. stress. Yeah. yeah. I have way yeah. more insulation. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting hearing what you consider rock bottom though. Cause I mean, so you've been doing, I've, I've been listening to interviews, mm-hmm. uh, talk about what, you had a tumor or a. Oh yeah. Uh, I know. It's they, a, you like it. It's I funny when she reacts to this. She's like, yeah. oh, yeah. It's it's almost like you block it out. I know. Like the, the big T trauma stuff. You're like, yeah. I know. We're still working on it. And yeah, you talk about a couple of the big T things in your book. God bless yeah. this mess. Shout out. Uh, That's right. it down below. Yeah. But it's interesting. Yeah. I, um, yeah, because that's when like how I viewed myself, what life, um, if you live your life off like validation and being good and. I don't want to fully like get into like what my rock bottom was, but uh, yeah, I think I lost like who am I? Because I feel like the world's saying I'm one. Th- or there's some voices saying that I'm I'm one thing, and I have made a lot of mistakes that like genuinely I didn't really make mistakes as a child. Like I I knew what was like I had figured out what was good to do and what was bad, and we're not going anywhere near bad. And then um, my life just kind of put me in these different situations that weren't as safe, which was good in some ways. It's helped me, like, become who I am today. But there was a lot of, like, shame that I was dealing with publicly, not even just privately. And it just made me, like, lose who I was. I think I just, like, Mm. lost my, like – the way I could even like describe myself, who I thought I was, who I thought people thought I was. And so that was my rock bottom. Like, yes, I've been through like really hard things that were like upsetting Mm. and difficult and hurtful and painful. But when it comes to like um, questioning like who you are, Mm -hmm. that's a rock bottom. That is interesting. And it's kind of like whenever I talk about like an ego shedding, it's like you Mm -hmm. have this identity ideal of like something you yeah. can always go to and point people to and like this is who I am. All of these like, things look at all these accolades. All look of these all things stuff. make up who I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when something is taken out, like your innocence or like your goodness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like for me, when I left the banking career, like you're not a banker anymore. So that's that's not a piece of this identity that that you've created that you can point to anymore. So it's almost like you're in this like vast open space of like, what the heck am I? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, that's what these... led me down the meditation rabbit hole. Yeah. And I think that's what led you down kind of like not only rediscovering yourself, but also like putting that back together. Yeah, definitely. Like it like shattered fully. And then I had to pick up this pieces that like I thought were true about myself. Is that, is this true? Not true. And then look at the pieces that other, the trash or stuff that mm-hmm. there, people have thrown at me and be like, is this true or is this not true? And, and taking it to be like, this is not true and I'm mm. not going to subscribe to this. And this is like, I know now I know me, but I had to like mm-hmm. d- d- dig deep to f- really be able to truthfully be like, this is not true. And I'm, and it doesn't matter how many people still or believe this. Like I know that mm. that is such a hard thing to do. And it was the hardest time of my life. Like I, it, it could see it in my body. You could see it in my spirit. Like I was just like, it's like, I guess they call it the dark night of the soul. Like I was really like not okay. But I think you have to get to that mm-hmm. to be like your best. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that's the difference of trauma and um, how also I think when you're younger, when big things happen, mm-hmm we have to survive and we don't have all the tools to be able to do what I feel like I've done at, you know, age 25, 26. So I do still have, like, I think I need to go help heal that little girl mm-hmm. still. Cause that's also still compounding. And that's a lot of what I'm very open with my therapy. Cause I, and I actually love that, that I am because I have so many people now that really love to hear like what type of modalities I'm, you're doing Mm -hmm. to heal certain things, but like I'm doing like inner family systems and EMDR and really going back because you can dissociate from certain things and feelings just to survive. And now it's like, that was so great then. And I'm so thankful that, you know, 
my mind or whatever helped me to be able to go Mm -hmm. continue on. But now is a good opportunity and I feel like strong enough to be able to go back. So I'm not just like, oh, yeah, I forgot that even happened. It's like, no, that happened. I can like grieve or do whatever needs to be done to like kill that that part. So I am not just like, ugh. but I still weirdly talk about some of like the like sad things, bad things in like a nonchalant way. But I think that just takes a little while because I had to for a while. But rock bottom. I couldn't do that. <laughs> Who was it we interviewed who said something about the voices? I don't know. There sure. were, we interviewed someone who said he was a musician, and he said the human heart was not meant. Oh, Drew Holcomb. Yeah, for good. the millions of voices that we mm-hmm. hear on a daily basis now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it just speaks to that. Like, you've exposed yourself to so many people mm-hmm. who have so many voices and so many opinions. And it, it shatters you. Yeah. Like, it shattered me. I met Andrew when I was at my rock bottom. Yeah. And it was kind of like I had to rebuild who I thought I was. Did you worry about that, though? Like, I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, I like him. He's cool. But, like, I'm unwell. <laughs> I think it was on our second. When did we go to the lake house? Yeah. Uh, like, within the first week of, like, third. dating. I had, like, a mental breakdown yeah on sitting out by the fire with him because i had real feelings even that early on with him and i could tell he had feelings with me and i was like i don't think you understand what you're getting yourself into and i just like (laughs) unloaded so i was like you have no idea what twitter's gonna say and i have to deal with like this from my past and i'm so like i just threw everything on him probably scared the crap out of you but he was like no, I don't care about any of that. And I was like, what do you mean? No, you don't get it then. You actually don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't get it either. Yeah. yeah. And it's taken a long time, but it's just been so great to have that partner that's like, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'll work through it with you. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really powerful when you when you have something that you care about specifically. It makes the, the potential dangers or the derivative yeah. secondary like concerns Mm-hmm. non-issues yeah so it's like find the one find the thing that you're moving towards and then like you'll move away from so many things mm-hmm. yeah this was a good conversation yeah. i feel guys. like we could okay. sit here for hours and talk mm-hmm. about all we just need this. to go to dinner yeah or like a campfire yes, yes. Super Super campfire. Campfire. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are gonna come to your first game night so excited you know, yes come Can't prepared wait, wait yeah. when is it august no, it's saturday. saturday are you guys gonna oh. come <laughs> oh yeah okay <laughs> Are you coming? Why did I oh, think it don't... was August? No, we can come. Yeah, do we're, this. Here. Okay. Okay, we're here. Gosh. July no, it's, 29th. It's on my calendar. July 29th. <laughs> we were coming. Come hungry. Yep. Yay. Wear comfortable shoes. Always. There might be a dress code. We haven't figured it out yet. I'm, I'm talking so like costumes. Excited about this. <laughs> and I love like we said, like one of our biggest things is we want it to have community. LA was sometimes hard for that. Mm-hmm. And that y'all like have um Y'all have the privilege to be able to have a space to be able to do that and that mm-hmm. you use that to really help other people build community and to, I guess, I'm sure for y'all, it's great, positive for y'all because you're able to build connections on your, yourself. But then for other people like us that are new to town, like, mm-hmm. I really like, thank y'all for doing that. Oh. Thank you for yeah, inviting for Wait till us. you meet some of these people. Yeah, you guys are part wait. of it, but we have worked really hard to just surround and build a community that is just strong believers and great mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. and great stories and differing opinions and beliefs and like everything but just good solid yeah people. and that is work like that's a say, that's yeah. a job to do that and i'm i commend you just because i've seen it firsthand it's like you were very intentional. just intentional deliberate about like hey man i want you to come try this out hey i want you to come mm-hmm. to this thing that i'm getting to get. and like that that is a lot of work getting eight people to come together <laughs> And just like making everyone feel comfortable, you know, hey, have you met so and so? Like this is what they do. I think you guys can connect on this. Like that's that's such a a gift and a talent, but also it's a lot of hard work to cultivate. Mm-hmm. So also I'm awesome ready to that. compete. I was about okay. to say Sean yeah. Sean does game night for a community. I do it so I can win game night. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So you guys can, you know, You're like come that's all, all great, sappy. but <laughs> you know, uh, I wanna I, win. I am genuinely super excited to uh see where this relationship goes like yeah. uh glad to have you in nashville 
I'm Thanks. thankful that you introduced me to, I think, my next new hobby yes. and interest. <laughs> and uh, I've already learned so much from you too. Yeah. So I think that'll Likewise. continue. Yeah. But thank you all for having us. This yeah. is so fun. So fun. I told Sean, I was like, this is like the best podcast idea. I don't know who came up with it, but okay. Well, Obviously. great, great idea. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I thought this was really fun. So Thank thanks you. for having us both. It's been fun. Yeah. We love the dynamic of relationships. So. Yeah. Keep Thank doing you. your thing, guys. Thank you. we Will do.